Smith. And I'd like to say as a land grant institution, Staff Assembly at UCLA acknowledges the Gabriella and Tongva peoples as the traditional land caretakers of the Tomvar and the Los Angeles Basin and Southern Channel Islands. And so with that, I am going to turn it over to Martin, our new athletics director. Well, hello everyone. Um, first of all, this is lunchtime, so please eat. Don't not eat because you're worried about um, what I'll think or what anybody else will think. We're in the middle of a pandemic, who cares what we think? Just eat and, um, <laughs> and do that. Uh, and then that might encourage me to bite my apple sometimes uh, here in my little drink. Uh, I am so honored and excited to be with you. Uh, I, I hope that I can meet all of you at some point, uh, at some point in time, but just from a staff perspective, I wanna start off by just thanking everyone for your resilience and what you're doing uh, to help UCLA through this time. Um, you are a collective group of, of what the people of an organization are. That's the heart and soul of any organization. And uh, in my time, I haven't met many people, but the people that I have met, our staff and our faculty have been unbelievable and a lot of resilience, a lot of heart uh, through a tough time. And so I wanna say thank you to you for, for everything that you do to not only serve our students, but other staff and your colleagues and your teammates. You know, this is the time that we've got to show a lot of empathy and compassion for what everybody's going through. And I think, um, you know, any organization, you're only as good as the people that make it up and, and you have been great. And so I just wanna, I wanna say thank you before I even start uh, for all you've done since uh, March and this pandemic has started uh, to help keep UCLA moving in the right direction. Thanks. Um, so so uh, Joy said I could say a few words, but I like, I mean, this is supposed to be casual. I mean, that's why I wore my, my hoodie right here, you know? Uh, I wanted it to be casual. I don't want this to be serious. Um, so I'm gonna just say a few words, but I'd rather take questions, uh, you know, whether it's live, I like live, or the chat um, that you may have about our athletics program, me, uh, Brian and Tori from athletics that I see on here, anything, you know, anything's up for grabs. Um, and, and that makes it uh, a little bit, oh yeah, we got our first one, I love it. Tell me about yourself. Well, Martin Jarman, I'm a Sagittarius. I enjoy long walks on the beach. Uh, oh, you didn't, you said tell me about yourself, right? Yeah, okay. Um, no, no, I, I like that. I need to make laugh. I, 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 I like energy. I get energy uh, from people. Um, I see somebody with an Ohio sweatshirt. I went to grad school at Ohio. Go Bobcats. There we go. Go Bobcats. Um, Martin Jarman. I'm from North Carolina originally. Uh, I have been here. I started July 1st, moved here uh, September, September, October, November, December, January. So about five months. Uh, been living in California. Um, I have a wonderful wife, Jessica. I have three beautiful daughters. Scarlett, Savannah, Serena, so many S's, I have to slow myself down. Um, but they're five, three, and one, they're awesome. They've been great during this move. Uh, there's no manual on how to move 3,000 miles across the country taking a new job during a pandemic. Uh, but I'm, I might write one, I've taken some notes, so I might write one when all this is said and done. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's been, it's been a heck of a transition um, you know, I'm thankful to be here. I'm, I'm honored to be here. I'm a big energy guy. Whenever you enter a room, whenever you enter a Zoom, you either bring energy or you're taking energy. And, and I try to encourage people to bring energy to whatever situation, whatever room you enter, uh, because this is a time where we need energy. Uh, there's a lot of bad negativity, dissension, uh, whether it's politics, I mean, anything. It's just, it's just a challenge right now. So we need more energy, we need more juice, we need more positivity. Um, and that doesn't mean everything is Pollyanna, we know it's not. Uh, but this is a time of, of, of resilience, of grit, of see it through, see the light. And, and that's something that I'm, I'm a big energy person. Be responsible for the energy that you bring. You know, take responsibility for that. 
Uh, so that's kind of my motto. I like, I like being up, not down. Um, and uh, I feed off people's energy. So uh, that's something that, that is important to me. Um, is that good about myself? Uh, I was a former college basketball player. Um, I, let's see, I, I spent seven years at Michigan State, worked at Michigan State, eight years at Ohio State. And then the last three years, I was the athletic director at Boston College. So I've been uh, in the Big Ten and the ACC, and now I'm out West. Never thought I'd be out here. Never saw this for myself. Uh, but, but you all know uh, sometimes that the best laid plans are ones you didn't even see. And I've just been fortunate that, that God had a path for me that I didn't quite see, but I know I'm here for a reason and I'm going to, I'm going to make the most of it. Uh, so Martin, since you brought up basketball, can you tell us who your favorite basketball players or professional basketball team? Cause we know what collegiate basketball team is your favorite, right? So, <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't have a favorite pro team. I, I typically, because I've moved a lot, I typically root for where I'm at. Um, that makes more sense to me. So, um, Lakers so I love the Lakers and the Clippers. <laughs> can't pick both. Can't do it. <laughs> you know, if I had to say one, I would probably say the Lake Show. Um, I have more of a connection with them. Um, Jared Dudley, that's on, on the Lakers, he's a Boston College alum, and I've gotten to know him over the years really well. He spoke at our athletic department on a Zoom already earlier in the fall. Uh, so I, I root for JD and, uh, you know, Braun. I like Braun, and, and uh, I like the Lake Show. Yep. Somebody just said, somebody asked a question earlier. Um, when will we actually beat Stanford? Well, we, our women's basketball team beat Stanford this past weekend. So if you're paying attention, you would know that. Whoever, whoever had that smart Alec uh, comment. Yeah, that's right. I haven't eaten today and I just finished a run. I'm spicy a little bit right now. I'm a little spicy. So no, I'm just, I'm just messing. I'm really not, but but uh, I'm messing a little bit. Um, so I, I I'll uh, that's a little bit about myself. Hi, my my daughter just Dad. got back from school. Dad, I'm on a Zoom right now. You want to say hi? Hi. Hi. This is Savannah. Dad, I'm gonna get something downstairs. Okay, I'll see you later. Okay. Um, He's adorable. Yes, yeah, Savvy is adorable. Savvy, can you close that door? Pandemic, working from home. Here we go. Um, Someone asked so anyway, why I don't you remember where I was. <laughs> oh, someone was asking why UCLA. How did you end up here? Why UCLA? Um, it's those four letters. They mean something. Not just in the country worldwide. The opportunity to be a part of a place like UCLA doesn't come across often. Uh, I feel like UCLA and that athletics program is elite. And I thought it was a unique opportunity to, to help steward an athletics program that maybe um, is not at the pinnacle of where it has been, but has the ability. I saw UCLA athletics, not for what it is right now, but what it can be. And that was important to me. Um, and that's part of, honey, I'm, I'm busy right now. I have to talk right here, okay? Oh, I love you. I'll come downstairs in just a little bit. I made you oh, you made me a school. Thank you so much. I appreciate yes, it. Yeah. <laughs> this is me, my daughter. I, I got to do this. Hold and on, let this? me show. Can I show everybody? She made me this picture at school today. I love Thank it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'll, I'll be down in a little bit, okay? Daddy, this is over here. Now, this is over here. The this is a hand of chips and this is a hand of beer. Oh, thank you. You got my hair. Okay, I'll be down in a little bit, okay? I'll see you soon. And this is a hand of head. <laughs> okay. Um, so. <laughs> Love it. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> I had to unmute just to laugh at that. That is the funniest thing ever. She got my hair on my beard and on my head. That's right. All right. <laughs> um... <laughs> But you know, UCLA is, is I saw what it what it can be athletics wise. And then just to be a part of a institution, number one public institution, the greatness that the athletics program, 118 national championships, I saw an opportunity to be a part of something special, but also kind of move it forward from where it needs to go. And um, you know, you just don't 
when I was going back and forth, you just don't get that many opportunities to have an impact. I want to have an impact with young people. That's, that's why I'm in this business. I want to have a major impact. And UCLA is going to provide me an opportunity to make a, a major impact. That's what I believe. Hey, Martin, you uh, mentioned in a alumni town hall recently, and the same question was asked in the chat, the <clears throat> elite, and you just used it again. Tell us about what that means to you. I don't know if you're public with it now, but if you are and aren't, give us the lowdown. I'm not public with it now, so um, let's don't uh, share this widespread. Yeah, hopefully in the next two weeks, knock on wood. We're, we're still All working right. out the video. Uh, I, I see you, Paul, with the UCLA and the Nike swoosh. I see you. I see you, brother. Um, but um, what you'll hear, you'll hear me talk more about athletics being elite. And elite is, is a mindset. That's an everyday you wake up with a mindset of being elite. And that's energy, leadership, integrity, toughness, excellence. That is elite. That's what UCLA athletics is about. Again, that's not winning every game. You're not going to win every game. But what I expect of our staff, our coaches, our student athletes, is we wake up every day, you have a mentality of being elite. That's having energy. Have passion for what you do. We serve students. Be enthusiastic about that. You can't do this if you don't have passion about what it is. It's just hard to do and maintain that. So have energy, have juice, be up, not down. Uh, that doesn't mean you don't have bad days, but let's recover from those, right? Let's recover, let's get our energy, let's have good energy. So um, energy is really important to me. Leadership, it starts with leading ourselves. What kind, of, what kind of things that we need to do to bring our best self to the table? I needed to take a run in between Zoom because I've been sitting here for a couple hours. So I did a quick run outside before this because I know I wanted to bring my energy to, to this staff session because I've never met a lot of you. This was your impression of me as a new Bruin, as a person in athletics. So I wanted to give you my best. I'm like, give you what I got for an hour and that's it, right? So leadership starts with us. With us. We can't lead students unless we lead ourselves in each other. So leadership, integrity. We're not gonna cut corners. We're gonna win, we're gonna win big, but we're gonna do it the right way. Um, that's not tolerated here at UCLA. That's not, that's not the deal, that's non-negotiable. We're gonna do it the right way. Uh, toughness, grit. You gotta have grit, we're in a pandemic. You gotta see it through. You gotta hold on right now. There are days that are hard, that are long. Uh, a lot of times success comes to those that can hold on the longest. And so we've got to have a level of toughness and grit to be successful. Um, it's not easy. It is not easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Everybody would win. So that's where toughness comes in. You got to have a level of grit. And, and I like to say, see it through. Uh, and finally, excellence. That's what we want to be about. We want to be about excellence. We want to do things at a high level. We don't want average. We don't want mediocre. We want excellent. I expect that of myself. I try to do the best I can, and then I'm a rest. I'm gonna leave it alone. Uh, and that's what I expect of our student athletes, our coaches and our staff. So energy, leadership, integrity, toughness, excellence, that is elite. We are UCLA athletics, we are elite. It's a mindset and that's, that's what it is. So you'll, there's gonna be a video that comes out in the next two or three weeks that talks about elite, trying to get some of our student athletes involved in it, but, um, but that's what it is. That's what we're about. Awesome. And what are your goals for the athletic program? Goals for athletic program. First one is, is provide an exceptional world-class student athlete experience. You know, at the end of the day, if, if we don't, if, if people don't leave UCLA student athletes and say that was the best two, three, four, five, six years of my life, then we failed them. That's the number one goal is how do we make their experience the best it can be? Uh, so that's something that, that we focus on every day. And that's, that's the overarching goal. Uh, so that's the first one. The, the second one is we got to get through this pandemic. You know, I came at a challenging time. I'm gonna be honest with you. We've had some, we've had some blows and some challenges, uh, different, different business opportunities, sponsorships, different things haven't gone our way. And so part of, part of the goal right now is to come out of this and come out of it stronger. What does that mean? Hopefully we have better relationships. Hopefully we're closer with some of our partners. Hopefully we'll be aligned with some better partners than we had before. You know, how do we, we'll be more focused. We can't do things business as usual as we've been before. And some of this needed to happen anyway. Some of this is brought on from the pandemic. So how do we use this time to get better and come out of this stronger and hold on? So part of my goal is just to get us through this next year, two years, uh, 
even probably three because this pandemic, at least in athletics, with no fans, revenues are down, different things, challenges that we have, it's going to take a little while, uh, but, but we're going to get there and we're going to be strong. Uh, another goal is, is inspire hope. You know, we need hope and belief. Be a hope teller. You, everybody can do this on the Zoom. Be a hope teller. Not a, you know, you hear about truth tellers. Be a hope teller because right now people need hope. You need to believe that it's going to get better and it will get better. And, and it starts with us as far as what we believe and how we, how we feel. And then that's got to permeate with our teammates and our colleagues. So I try to be a hope teller and I try to be a belief giver. I've got to have belief in, in our staff and our coaches and our young people uh, that they're going to be okay. And, and our students need to hear that. So um, hope teller, be a belief giver. That's a goal. And that's something I have to remind myself. And, and finally, I want to win. I want to win big. You know, we've got some programs that are winning big. Softball is preseason number one in the country. Baseball is number two. You know, we've got some unbelievable uh, programs in the trajectory they're on. Then there's some other ones that that we got to do a little more. We got to push a little more. And I'm learning all the things that, that, that go into winning and success here at UCLA because winning here looks different than other places. So I'm trying to learn a nuance, uh, whether it's academics, admissions, different things that, that we can do to help our coaches be successful. Because ultimately that's the job of the AD is what can I do to help the coach and the staff put our young people in positions to experience and taste success at the highest level. I want to win. Make no mistake. Uh, I hate losing. I'm competitive. Uh, we're going to do it the right way, but but that's that's another goal, too. I want to win, and I want to win big. Awesome. Um, and then along with that, uh, Melissa is asking, how are the student athletes doing with everything going on and all the uncertainty? They are resilient. They are, they are tougher than what you would imagine. So we had about seven or eight events this past weekend, first time, not this past weekend, the weekend before. And it was the first time we've had sports besides football and basketball, and it was awesome. We had a swim and dive meet, and I went out there Friday and Saturday. And Saturday morning, I, I usually you're in the stands, but no one's in the stands. So I, I, was, I was on the side actually with the swimmers. So I was among them. And I, and I talked to probably 10 of them. And I just asked, like, what, what is it that, we, that people don't know that you wish people would have a better understanding of, of your experience? And, and they said, Martin, um, we've been practicing or training in the pool doing some ocean swimming. Ocean swimming is not the same. They kind of explained that to me. But they said they've been swimming since March with no competition. And they said, even though this meet was supposed to be 15 teams and it was only three, it was us, like I think UNLV and Utah, even though in Fresno State, um, it feels so good to finally compete and go against someone else. And, and because that's the way they get better. They explained to me in swimming, the more meets you have, your time gets faster because of the competition. You don't really get faster and pick up that speed in practice and training. That's something I never knew. They said you really get better by the end of the year because of competition. Competition brings out the best in all of us. So they just talked about how good it felt, even though no fans, because I was like, does it, does it suck that you don't have fans and there's no energy? Because I didn't feel the energy. It was just music, right? They were like, it's different. It feels a little like a practice, but having someone else and competing and having that, that, that stopwatch and that clock, they say it's just an unbelievable feeling. You really appreciate being able to compete. So I wish I could have recorded that for all the people that say you shouldn't be playing sports now during a pandemic. That's, that's, that's crap. These, these kids, especially from mental, emotional, doing it with their teammates, doing something they love, it's, it's gold to them. It really is. That's awesome. Okay, um, and then- I'm getting, Angela, I'm getting excited. Let me sit back. I'm I like, all right, this. I'm ready to go. I love hearing go. stories. <laughs> okay. Um, One-year-old sleep. She's taking a nap. Sorry. Okay, Angela asks, uh, please also share how you feel about the significance of you being the first Black athletic director in UCLA's 101-year history. Angela, I appreciate that question. I'm honored to be the first. Uh, there's always got to be a first, and that shows progress. However, I would say that more importantly, I hope we can get to the day where we're not talking about first. That, that will feel a lot better to me. Um, so it's something that I understand the significance. I probably downplay it because that, that, thinking about that doesn't help me do what I know I'm called to do. 
Uh, but it isn't lost on me with the the great African Americans that have been Bruins that have been legends. You know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Jackie Robinson, Rayford Johnson. I mean, so many trailblazers and people that have made a significant impact on the world have been Bruins and come through Westwood. And so I I know that I am only here because of the work of people that came before me, and I understand that, and I'm humbled by that. And the only thing that I try to do is do a good enough job to where it makes it easier, not just in athletics, but in other areas for people to say, just because uh, this person or this candidate doesn't look like what we've had before, we have confidence that they can do an excellent job. And so uh, I'm honored, I'm humbled, uh, but I do hope we get to the day where it's not that big of a deal. Nice. Oh, I got it. Okay, um, and then Phil asks, when you say moving UCLA athletics forward, with so much money in college athletics, especially football and basketball, how does UCLA compete in terms of funding, facilities, educational integrity, et cetera? Sorry, I got to plug up my uh, computer right here. It's got 2% left. I just realized so I'm, I'm sitting on the floor now. We're, we're going to move it a little bit here. So, Joy, the question was, how do we fund it? So how do you compete versus all of these elite programs that have so much private funding, I think is the heart of the question. Oh, uh, well, that's where everybody on the Zoom comes in because, because you're on here, you've got to contribute financially to the athletic program. Brian Smith, I'm pointing to Brian, is, is in athletics fundraising. He, he will be the contact that you can make your, your 50 or $100 gift. Uh, and we can do a payroll deduct, I'm sure. I, I, I think we can do a payroll deduct. I'm guessing we can, Brian. Uh, but, but no, um, you know, finances are tough. You know, you're always going to be in competition with people to have more than you. That's not a reason why you can't get them. Uh, you can't let that be an excuse. You can't let that be a crutch. It is real, though. You do have to have expectations uh, commensurate with the, the resources that you have. You can't expect a program that's funded at, at 10th or 11th in the conference to win the championship every year. That's just not realistic. So I think you look at where each program is, you evaluate resources, uh, personnel, and then you make a judgment based on that. What should those expectations be? And I, I think that's important. You know, our, our expectation for, um, I don't even want to make examples because, you know, everybody runs with it if you do, but, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll use an example from my former institution. At, at Boston College, the track and field program didn't have a, a track on campus. Uh, they didn't have anywhere to train. So it was unrealistic to expect them to be in the top three in the ACC when they're the only ones that don't even have a track, right? So, so how do you compete with some that have more resources? You got to find ways that you can level it a little bit. You know, maybe they don't have, we don't, we might not have the same resources, um, you know, uh, in certain areas, but, but there are other ways that we can, we can, get better and, and compete. I'll give you an example. I'm a big video guy. I'm going to invest more in our video and social media because everything is recruiting. There's two things that you got to do. You got to recruit talent and you got to develop talent. That's it. That's what coaches need to do and be really good at is recruiting talent, bringing the right kids to Westwood and then developing that talent to where they can be their best. And so how do you do that? How do you recruit talent? Well, part of it is you got to sell yourself. You got to be cool. You got to be exciting. You got to be a place that they can that can push young people, challenge them, help them reach their goals. So part of that is video and social media. And, and so, you know, if we have two people that do video now, I hope that we may have additional resources to do video because I think that's really important. Now that means you may have to take it from other areas, but it's a lot, um, it's a lot more financially uh, fiscal or responsible to, to increase your video social presence than it is to do some other things that we could use those resources, those dollars for. So part of it is to answer that question is I have to assess where we are, how we spend, and then how can we spend wiser that's gonna get more bang for the buck as far as helping us recruit and develop uh, in a significant way. Awesome. Um, and then Bonnie asks, how does the university sustainability goals fit into your vision for athletics? You know, I, I can't really answer that question because I don't know the university sustainability goals. Um, I, I'm sure that before I got here, athletics was a big part of that. I know we have a zero waste component with our event management with some of our sports. So I'm sure that, that our goals align with that. But, you know, I've never read that. I don't, I don't know it. So I don't want to 
I don't want to speak out of turn, uh, but I do know that my predecessor, Dan Guerrero, uh, who's been great to me, was here 18 years. He's a Bruin, played baseball here. Um, you know, he was very much in alignment with the university's mission and institutional goals. And so I'm sure that whatever our involvement in athletics has been, has been on par with that. I, I'm confident to say that at least. And I don't expect to change that. Okay. I believe uh, that the kids are our future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why ruin the planet for them? Yeah, okay. yeah. I want to ruin the planet. <laughs> Love it. Okay. So we've got a couple questions about comparing our athletics program to Boston's as one better. And then what's the biggest change coming from a private institution to a public one? Hmm. Well, the one's better. That's that's easy. I wouldn't be here if this one <laughs> if this one wasn't better, you know. Uh, BC made it very hard for me to leave at the end, so that's why it was tough. Um, I'll just say that. So I, I, I believe in UCLA, though. Um, private, public, totally different. There, there's so many things. I'll, I'll give you one example. Um, uh, at Boston College, one of the first things I did was, was implement selling beer and wine in the football stadium in the basketball arena and hockey. They hadn't done that. Um, at, at a private institution, you, you know, the president has a lot of, of say so, you know, it's not as many um, cooks in the kitchen, so to speak. So, so that was, I remember the first conversation I had with my boss at the time, Father Leahy, who has been there 25 years, uh, well-respected, you know, everything, all things go through father, right? And, and he's been great to me. I'm still in touch with him. And I remember talking to him about, I really think we should sell beer and wine in the stadium. And he asked me, do you think you could do it in a safe way? And I said, yes. And I didn't know at the time, but I said, yes, anyhow. And he said, you're gonna have to work with the city of Boston and, and different groups. And we did that, but the point was, I heard it from him that, that that was something that he was okay with. So it made it easier. It was almost like going downhill with the political process of trying to get beer and wine approved versus a state institution where you've got the board of trustees, you've got the regents, you've got UC, you've got the administration here, you've got, you've got so many different layers uh, and sign offs and considerations because you're public that you just don't have at a private institution. So, so I would say it might be easier sometimes to get some things done in a quicker fashion. Um, that doesn't make it right or wrong. That just makes it, the process is different. I know I would have to go through a total different process to do something like that here versus at Boston College when the guy was like, if you can make it work, good. Now go do the work. And I have two phones here versus one at, at, a, at a private institution. I gotta have two phones. <laughs> okay. Um, and then Paul says, coming from Ohio and Boston, I'm really curious to know how you're handling the harsh California winter. It might actually rain this weekend and temps um, might drop into the 50s. So I just ran, normally I don't, uh, normally I do not run outside if it's below 50. And so like in Boston, I would stop running in October outside and I just work out inside. Well, you can't work out inside here because I haven't joined a gym because I've never been to a gym. I haven't even dined inside since I've lived in California, believe it or not. So um, I ran today and it was 52 degrees. I ran right before this and uh, it was cold. I can't believe how, how cold it was to me. So I think my, my blood has already changed into this California weather. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll make do. I like being outside and um, I thought it never rains, but yeah, it, it rained yesterday. I think it started drizzling when I was running outside. I actually had to put my, I had to put my hood on. I had a hood on and, um, I think it's going to, yeah, it's going to rain a couple of times. I don't know what I'll do. I think I'll probably go outside and record it and then put it on my Instagram and Twitter and, uh, tell everybody, Hey, I thought it's not supposed to rain in Southern California. You know, you guys, you guys sold me on that one. Bunch of lies over here. Bunch of lies, man. Bunch of lies. It never rains. It'll be great. It never rains, man. It never rains. But then I get a picture from Boston and it's snow everywhere. And I'm like, I'll take some rain. <laughs> yep, it's, it's hard to beat California's weather. Okay, um, that's all the questions in the chat. So if anybody else has a question, feel free to pop it in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question live if you prefer. Oh, I, I think somebody asked too about the the difference, the differences at BC and UCLA, they're, they're totally different. Um, you know, I, I would say UCLA has more nationally competitive programs. Um, the limelight, the spotlight is bigger. The lights are brighter, as I like to say. 
So, um, you know, I think there's a, there's a more intense pressure to be successful. Um, when, when the lights are the brightest, you must perform. I truly believe that. And so I think you have more nationally competitive programs at UCLA than you do at BC. Um, that's, that's, a, that's another big one. Um, and everything just, it, it just has more spotlight and attention. You know, I can, I started in July and early on, this was probably like my first or second week, there was a, there was a letter that came out from some uh, football players, student athletes, or at least they had signed it. Not all of them even had read it, but there were some signatures on it. And in, in an hour, it was on like the bottom ticker of ESPN. That doesn't happen at BC. That happens at UCLA. So there's a, there's a, there's a, a spotlight that's, that's brighter and bigger here. So you, you have to be on point more and you've got to be organized and you've got to be nimble, um, excuse me, to respond to things that occur. That's, that's one big difference. And viral gymnastics videos. Yeah, I mean, there's probably over 8 million videos. Um, she was unbelievable. She's gonna, I, I can't say what shows, but she's gonna go on some shows and do some things. I think today's show might be, might be later too. I mean, just unbelievable. Very cool. Oh, sorry, there might have been a question that came in before that. I just remember seeing that one. Oh, um, Stace asks, do you think it would be possible slash useful to occasionally schedule home football games at SoFi Stadium? Um, would it be? Yeah, it would be, it would be nice. I mean, I think obviously when you have a shiny new toy in town, you know, people want to utilize and experience something new. Um, I don't know if that's possible. We love the Rose Bowl. That, that takes nothing away from the Rose Bowl. Um, that's the granddaddy of them all. It's historic. Uh, I love the Rose Bowl. I don't know contractually if we would be able to do that. Um, so, you know, would you like to? Maybe. Uh, can you? Doubt it. I, you know, I don't know. I, I haven't looked at the contract, but, um, but yeah, anytime there's a shiny new toy, everybody wants to use it and play with it. But, uh, but we like who we have and our partner. And, and I think, uh, I'm focused really on the Rose Bowl and getting more fans to the Rose Bowl. How do we do that when fans can come back? That's that's probably more of my focus. Okay. Um, and then Lucy asks, do you manage your own social media? Yes, I do. And I might I might shift that a little bit. I think I might need some help because social media can be a monster. You know, it's, it sucks you in. You start and then, you, you know, it's like the, you know, you get the likes and the retweets and then it starts to feel good and you start doing it more and then you can't turn it off then your wife is saying like why are you tweeting about this you know and and uh it can kind of take over so I'm, I'm i'm evaluating that right now i don't i don't know if i'm going to continue posting as much as i can as much as i do um I've, I've tried to do that so the ucla brewing community can get to know me because i'm not able to meet with people so it's been a way really to connect with with ucla represent and also again recruiting i want to show high school prospective student athletes uh, what we're about what I'm about and it's cool to come to Westwood and it's and it's a place that you want to be so that's why I utilize it um, but I think I think I might try to get some help uh, from someone on staff or something because uh, it can be a lot it can be a lot you know the demands to to post and and engage and interact so I want to be here a long time and I want to keep my energy you know you got to do things know thyself you got to know what gives you energy, what takes energy from you. Sometimes that takes energy from me, social media. So I got to be mindful of, of um, mind right, game right. I got to manage myself um, in a way that helps me be the best I can for, for my colleagues, for my teammates, to give them my best. So I, I might have some help um, manage mine a little bit. But right now, I do it all my own. I do it all my own. Okay, that makes sense. Do you think um, it's good? Whoever, Lucy, you asked that. Do you think it's good or not good? I just put it in the chat that uh, it's helpful. It reminds me to get out and exercise. I, I don't think uh, Mr. Guerrero was out and about running around West LA during the middle of the day trying to get a run in. So it's helpful to see that a senior leader like you is making time to get the endorphins up. It's helpful. Right. Mind Mine right, game right. Me. Most people who on here who know me know that I have two large Huskies and without them, I probably would have gained that COVID-19. So <laughs> it's helpful to see other people get out there and be active. You got to do it. I encourage that. I'll, I'll take walks sometimes instead of doing a Zoom, I'll just call in and walk outside. You got to get out, smell the fresh air, get some sun, 
you know, it's California. That's why I say it's California, man. You know, you got to embrace it. You got to enjoy it. For sure. Yeah. Okay. So back to recruiting. Someone asks, um, Colleen asks, do the premier facilities on campus make recruiting easier? Staff Assembly had a great tour of the new basketball facility uh, within the last two years. Is there a sport that needs more or additional facilities? The answer is yes. Uh, I have a favorite phrase I use. Uh, Brian, you'll see this. Brian's like right below me, so I, I see him very easily. I see everything you do, Brian. So if you laugh or you make a mean face, I, I'm taking notes. Uh, but Brian's in fundraising and development. And, and my favorite phrase, phrase I like to use with donors is three words. It's never enough. So, so we may have some nice facilities, but it's never enough. We always have some needs that we have to help position our student athletes for success. So uh, we do have a great basketball facility. I think that was done in 2017 or 2018 and uh, football building done the year before that. So uh, we're blessed to have those two programs, uh, three programs, uh, both hoops teams and, and football in some nice digs. But, you know, we need to do some work with our baseball uh, facility with the uh, VA there. We're, we're working on some stuff there. Uh, I'm sure if, if I asked the coaches, there would be a laundry list of things that they need. I haven't asked yet because we don't have the money. So I haven't asked that yet. Uh, does that help recruiting? Yeah, it does. You know, think about it. If you're going somewhere for the next four, three, four, five years, um, you know, if any, I compare it to professors in labs. You know, any professor you're trying to recruit to do research, meaningful research, they want a great lab. They want a lab that, that allows them to do what they love to do. And the same thing with student athletes, they want the locker room, the facility, the practice environment that allows them to be their best and to train and develop to be pros. You come to UCLA because you wanna be a pro or you're really good and you want an experience with the elite or, or top of the food chain as far as athletes. And so no different than a professor in the kind of lab that they want, our student athletes want, want a great lab. And so we're always trying to look at our facilities uh, is that the end all be all with recruiting? No. I mean, there are a lot of places that have great places. It comes down to uh, what can you sell that makes you distinctive from other places? Westwood, uh, the beach, the location, the people. What does it mean to have a, to be a Bruin? The history, you know, you sell all those things in recruiting, but facilities definitely help. All right. Um, and then what are your immediate goals and improvements for UCLA Athletics? You know what, the, the real immediate goal is to get us through this pandemic. You know, that's, it takes up so much energy every day to testing, you have anxiety, you wanna know, you know, uh, one of our programs right now is paused for 10 days, not competing. You, you get nervous. Yesterday, a women's basketball game got canceled and a men's basketball game got canceled because of the other team. So there's so much anxiety with COVID and the testing and can they compete and how does it affect our local campus and the mentality of our student athletes when they have setbacks and have to gear up and, and then get disappointed and get back up. It's getting us through this period, our staff. You know, I'm, I'm thinking and talking about connectivity right now because to build, to be successful, you have to have trust and to establish trust, you gotta have connection. You know, you do your best when you feel personally connected to something, whether it's a cause or a person. And, and so I'm trying to figure out ways for our athletic department, how do we foster and nurture more connectivity amongst our units, our staffs, our students? How do we do that? You know, I've never met Brian Smith. I joke with him. I've never met him. I guarantee you, I will have a better relationship with him once I finally meet him, because then I'll feel more connected to him and vice versa. But until you have that connection, and develop that, how, what are ways that we can do that? You know, we got to do it through Zooms, we got to do it through phone calls. Um, what are some, some different things that we got to do to, to, to connect with one another so we can do our best work with each other? You know, we're all a team. So my immediate goal is to figure out ways to get through this pandemic to keep our momentum and energy moving in a positive way. That's really the goal, you know, for my athletic department, our staff, and then also our student athletes dealing with the anxiety and the concern of, of just trying to compete and get through a season. Joy, you're muted, girl. That means you yep. got to give five dollars into the athletic. Here party. we go. <laughs> we're talking muted. Okay. Um, oh, ten. Brian said it's ten. 
It's, it's Texas. Going up, it's right? California, 20? Texas. It's 10, really, not five. Hey, 10. Martin, just a reference. Both Joy and I are also fundraisers for the campus, so you're talking to a bunch of fundraisers. It's never enough. <laughs> change, short change our money. <laughs> it's never enough. Right when I get a gift. Hey, that 100000 was great. You know I'm coming back because it's never enough. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um. So Phil asks about the Nike partnership. So what are your expectations for the new partnership other than brand new swag? It's going to help us recruit. Young people want to be a part of Nike and the Jordan brand family. I asked a lot of our student athletes, not a lot, I asked some of our student athletes, you know, if they could re-envision who we were with. And it was, I mean, it was hands down Nike and Jordan. And so again, remember, everything is about recruiting. Uh, even in your units, it's recruiting talent, developing talent, how we work together. So Nike and Jordan brand family, being a part of that is going to help us recruit better. It really is. And especially in football and men's and women's basketball, you know, Nike is huge and Jordan brand is huge in the basketball world. And I will tell you that some of our former partners that I, that I won't mention by name, I don't say their name anymore. Uh, there's one in particular, I don't say that name. Um, you, you're not going to lose a recruit necessarily for what company you have, uh, but it definitely can make it harder to recruit. It can, you know, um, some of these kids have grown up wearing Nike and then all of a sudden you're asking them to come to school and do something um, different. They're, they're creatures of habit. They didn't get to be great um, by, by changing things and not having routine. And so Nike and the brand and the innovation and the technology, that's where we need to be. So, so one, I think it's going to help us recruiting. It's going to give us a level of cachet. We're one of five programs in the country that'll be Jordan brand and Nike. It's us, Oklahoma, North Carolina, Michigan, and Florida. So right there, that separates us from our peers in the Pac-12 and others because we're gonna be Jordan and Nike. Uh, so that, that gives us a competitive advantage, you know? Um, and our coaches will have to figure out how to recruit to that and, and that kind of thing. But um, how else is it gonna help us besides the swag? It's gonna be innovation. It's gonna be the best. You know, it's like, I'm a big believer, you know, I say mind right, game right. I can't, I can't be my best unless my mind and, and my emotional, mental, everything is right up here. It's the same thing. It's like, it's like, look good, feel good, play good, you know, and, and I hope we're going to play real good with Nike and Jordan Brand. I love it. And then a follow up to that, Bonnie asks, so what's going to happen to all the old gear? Is it being landfill, donated, repurposed somehow? You know, we haven't figured that out yet. I'm sure that um, that we're going to probably be in some situations to donate some. I'd like to donate some, especially in the, the greater Los Angeles area, less fortunate. Uh, I want to create Bruins, Bruins wherever I can. And, and uh, you know, I want I want that gear to be used. You know, it's still got those four letters on it. And that's power. And, and especially with our friends downtown, I want to have any leg up on, on them that I can. So if that means more people wearing brewing gear, even if it's with a different apparel provider, uh, I'll take that. So we're still trying to figure that out, what we're going to do exactly. Uh, it just depends on how much inventory we have left to clear out. Okay. Um, and then Monica says, we love the energy you're bringing to UCLA. How do you find work family life balance? Uh, I don't believe in balance. Um, I don't. I, I, I believe in harmony, meaning there are times where one is going to be more important than the other. That's going to, you know, if, if we're, um, I believe you got to find harmony. That's, that's what it is. And you have to have a willingness to, to prioritize based on your situation, what needs to take priority and precedent. So, so how that plays out. Tonight at, at 536, when everything's going crazy in my house, I got to put my phones down and I got to help cook dinner and I got to make sure I'm holding my one-year-old because she's going to be crying, annoying everybody in the house. That's the priority. So that, so my balance, that ain't going to be balanced. That's going to be 90% family and 10% the job. You know, if people call me, I'm not going to probably answer between 530 and 630 tonight. Um, you know, Saturday when we're about to play a football game or, or basketball comes on, I got to be locked in. I got to look at that game. I got to see what I see. I got to be able to talk to Mick or Corey and, and share my thoughts and perspectives to help us be successful. So come, come six o'clock on Thursday when we were going to play Oregon, you know, I'm, I'm going to another room and I'm locked in. There's no balance there. That's, this is the job. This is the deal. I got to watch this game. 
Um, now I might have to, she might say, well, take the one year old with you and, and, and I might have to do that and, and manage. But um, I think, I think balance is a fallacy. I, I really don't believe in balance. I, I believe in talking to the people that, that your loved ones and people you live with or, or care about and trying to find a harmony and understanding that is give and take. That's what life is. Nothing in excess is good. Too little of something is not good. It's finding the harmony and, and what is that give and take, that push and pull uh, harmony that allows you to be your best and to serve those different people, whether it's my daughter and I had to make a decision right then. I need to lock in with her right now so she can show me this picture because she's not going to stop. And, and plus, that's the right thing to do. It's cool. You know what? This will be here. You know, so I got to lock in. Um, but then there's a time where, you know, you guys are taking time to, to, to hear me. You, you want to hear about the Jordan brand or whatever it is. So, you know, it's a harmony. There was no balance there, right? It's a harmony. I love it. Okay. Um, Leah says, what kind of shift would you need to make for recruiting? Meaning recruiting from a private institution versus a public one. Before I answer that, I want to make sure my, my man... Uh, Ohio with the white sweatshirt. You just have iPad there, so I don't know your name, but he's been wanting to ask something. So I want to get my Ohio peeps in in that question. Um, but but real quick, the shift recruiting. You know, for me, I just have to learn what it is, each program, how we recruit, what are our competitive advantages, and then try to, try to um, bolster those. So right now, for example, I know in, in some of our sports, uh, people want to be in Westwood. You know, it's a beautiful campus. It's a beautiful place. So I know part of part of that is, and you see me, whether it's sun or beach or whatever, is trying to show and, and really bolster what makes UCLA attractive. And that's a big piece of that. So so that's, you know, I'm not running right now in the snow in Boston and showing that on, on Twitter or Instagram because that's not a selling point, right? Um, that would be different there. That's a, that's a Jesuit Catholic institution. So I might post something different about men and women for others and the values there that are more recruiting centric to uh, student athletes that are, that are in private Catholic high schools in Cincinnati or wherever, you know, it's different than uh, the Inland Empire and what makes sense and what, what's attractive to those kids, right? So you just gotta tap into like how we recruit now and the things we do well, bolster those. Don't focus on the negatives and what we don't do well. Let's focus on what we do well and strengthen that. Ohio, do you have a question? What's your name, uh, Ohio? Here, yes, uh, can you hear me? Okay, I'd first like to welcome you to UCLA. Um, second, I wore the sweatshirt because my daughter graduated from the program there at Ohio University. Oh, nice. I've gone there for um, Jim Kaler to speak on John Wooden several times and Dr. K. Um, Dr. K. She, yeah, she's a graduate there after, after graduating from UCLA. Uh, my name is Tony Spino. Um, oh, Tony, okay. Yeah, uh, 45 years at UCLA. Um, 38, trainer for 38 national championship teams there. Um, and I just wanted to welcome you. I've enjoyed this um, meet and greet luncheon. Um, it's good to see everyone again. I hope everyone's staying safe and, um, you know, welcome UCLA, but I'm here for you. I'm here to help you. If you have anything you need, anything you'd like to discuss, um, if you got time, I'm, I'm always here. And like I said, I've been here for many, many years. Uh, and, uh, you know, you touched on something very, the very thing you first thing you said about having athletes leave UCLA with a great experience. Well, I can only, I can tell you honestly, and I'll tell you in front of everyone. I can't tell you how many athletes have left crying on my shoulder over the years in disappointment, and that, I've always felt that needed to change. So I just Thank want you. just want to share that. Well, Tony, thanks for the. For the words and and the history, man, you've seen a lot in your time here. That's really cool. And yeah, uh, I've been very blessed to be around with some great, great human beings and great athletes. Very cool. Very cool. 
Thanks, Tony. Um, we have time for one more question. So whoever's feeling brave and bold, unmute yourself and ask the last question. I've got plenty of questions, but I think I've been going quite a few times. Does anyone else want to step up? People shy. shy. All right, I'm going to go. Uh, oh, Dawn. Dawn's got oh, one. Dawn. Dawn, there you go. Cool. She's got the mass brewing behind her. I do. I do. I'm very proud of him. Um, question as someone who's been a longtime staff member, um, who's a major Bruin fan and have been since I was young um, and little, um, how can staff communication improve? I get a lot of emails as a donor or as someone who buys a ticket. But I, and UCLA, I'm with UCLA Health and UCLA Health has a nice like annual um, football game experience once a year. But how can we improve communication from athletics to the staff to encourage what I see at so many other division one or frankly division three to uh, campuses where the engagement isn't just sports fans or students? So Don, let me let me get this right. You're asking when you say improve the communication, you mean you want to hear more from athletics? Yeah. You want yeah. more emails from us? We only get, I mean, at least in my experience, we only hear anything if it's in the Bruin newspaper, which is usually hard copy, or if it's um, you know, you're a donor, frankly. Or if your health, like for me, UCLA Health does an event with athletics. So maybe we're, I'm just in my bubble, but I've been on campus as well. And, um, you know, that there just wasn't direct email. Like we hear from other units centrally. It would be lovely to hear highlights that way. Okay, you know what, Don, what I'm gonna do, I hope Tori's on here, but I, I think I need to ask the question to see what's the process to be able to communicate globally with the campus? Cause I'm, I'm guessing that there's some restrictions or protocols as far as, cause like right now coming, somebody asked about private versus public. I am overwhelmed with emails. I, I, I told Gene Block, I, I, can't, I can't believe how many emails we get here at UCLA. It's, it's, I don't know how anybody gets anything done. It's so many emails. Well, so for me, I'm like, more emails. Like, <laughs> you're, you're coming at a unique time. I mean, I think COVID has taken over the airwaves, um, but uh, Lucy and Kelly are putting notes in the chat uh, in, in some agreement. So I, I, encourage, I encourage something because I think more staff would like to hear information. And right now what we tend to get is directives, updates on policies, COVID-19, sort of very functional versus the entertainment and the positivity that athletics can bring to us. Well, Don, I would love for you, if you had time to email me exactly what you just said, and then it's easier for me to forward it to some people that are high up at the university and say, you know, we should change this. We should look at this. Or, or I can do my phrase, Help me understand <laughs> why it is that we do it this way. That's a, that's a cleaner way to do that. We'll but do. I, I, I'd love to explore that we'll because do. I, I do think we can be a beacon of light and hope. We talk about hope, giving hope yeah. to yeah. the campus as far as what our young people are doing and uh, sports and, and winning and success. I, I think that's really important. So I, I'm, I'd love to. Okay. Send awesome. me that email, mjarman we'll at athletics.ucla.edu. We'll do. Thank you. Or at Martin Jarman, Twitter or Instagram, at Martin Jarman. You can DM me too. I check those right now. I don't know how much longer I'm going to check them because it's a lot, but I do that for now at least. Yeah. Does okay, Brian want to say something? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll chime in on that. Don, uh, you can opt in to as many newsletters as you want with UCLA Athletics, uh, a weekly newsletter or individual sports if you want to be connected to an individual sport. That's happening. Um, so if you want to privately um, send me an email, we'll get you on the ticket system and you'll be opted into specific newsletters as you wish. 
I, I actually get those, but I am talking about a central, like a, a, a communication methodology to the greater staff. So I'll, I'll reach out. I'll include you, Brian. I had to take a I'm picture of that. Somebody said on the chat, Savannah added to the excitement. I'll have to show my wife that. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> hey, Don, just uh, one more note. Could you also add staff assembly to the email as you're going to send it? Since we'll likely need to be involved in distributing Absolutely. communication to staff. And I may just run a couple questions past you first as well, if that's okay. No problem. Okay, thank you. Let's get it done, Dawn. Let's get it done. Joy, Lucy, let's get it done. We need to get athletics out there. Help me. Help me. On it. I love it. We're on it. Okay, thank you again, Martin. This was so fantastic to meet you. Finally, we're all so thrilled to have you at UCLA. So a huge brew and welcome to you. And thank you all for joining us for today's Learn at Lunch. Agree. Thank you. Have thank a good you. day. Have good energy. You too. Have Savannah show up more often. <laughs> I will. I will. I did have someone DM me to ask if my dogs were going to show up. I said Savannah was enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Martin. Thank you. I'll see you guys. Thanks for having me. Love. I love this. This was good. Really good. Good to see you. Loved it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure. Thanks, Tony. Right.